In Unit 2, Atomic Models and the Structure of the Atom, we are going to learn the early models of the atom to the current model and how the current model explains the structure of the atom. We are going to learn in the second part how um, subatomic particles and their charges are taken into account to understand the structure of the atom. This is chapter 4 in your textbook. So there are three essential questions that you should be able to answer in the atomic model section we are going to discuss in 2.1 and 2.3, um, up to 2.3. The first one is explain how the scientific method, observations, theories, experiments, um, Hypotheses, experiments, theories, and laws um, go from one thing to another. Um, number two, compare and contrast historical models of the atom from Democritus to the Schrodinger model or the quantum mechanical model. And finally, you should be able to construct an argument or a critique and explain how scientific observations and data led to the revisions of various atomic models. So I will be discussing um, details of different experiments and then show how the data led to a new hypothesis. And you should be able to uh, explain those things. The first atomic uh, theory was an idea of the atom really was proposed by Democritus, a Greek philosopher in 460 BC. Um, then the first model um, was from John Dalton in the early 1800s and there were several other models leading to the final one in 1926 by Erwin Schrodinger, which is the accepted version of the atom uh, as of today. So today we are going to discuss the first um, models, uh, Democritus up to Thomson. So Democritus noticed that when he kept on cutting different types of matter into smaller and smaller particles, there was an uncuttable particle in Greek. This was called a tomos. And so he said that there is an indivisible, small, solid particle that's common to all matter and this cannot be created or destroyed and he said all atoms of different substances are identical so this is the first concept of the atom in history he did not explain the chemical properties of atoms nor did he explain them in experiments because he was not a scientist to, uh, about 2,000 years later, um, Democritus' model is modified by the British chemist and school teacher John Dalton. Um, he said atoms are solid, indivisible, and they cannot be destroyed or created just like Democritus. But he added some important things to his atom. The atoms of different elements, he noticed, have different chemical and physical properties and masses because at that time, some elements have been discovered and he has been doing experiments with them. To this day, we understand number two to be th true. And he said, during chemical reactions, atoms are combined or rearranged to form new substances. We know that is true also. And finally, he said uh, he proposed a theory called multiple proportions, which explains how when you make two different compounds, you can think of them as recipes with the same ingredients, in this case atoms. The mass ratios of ingredients in the recipes are different. You know this, if you make um, chocolate cake and chocolate chip cookies, you basically use the same ingredients, but you use different 
proportions of them, masses of them, right? So, um, now this has become a law because nobody was able to disprove it. It keeps getting proven and proven. So, this is a part of his atomic theory. It goes as when two or more compounds are formed from the same elements, the mass ratios between the elements of each compound is a different whole number ratio. Let's look at this in an example using carbon monoxide CO and carbon dioxide CO2. Let's say we make both compounds with 3 grams of carbon. So here's your carbon atom and we combine the 3 grams of carbon with 4 grams of oxygen to give a total of 7 grams of carbon monoxide. Then we combine the 3 grams of carbon with 8 double the grams of oxygen as in the first instance and 3 plus 8 is 11 grams of carbon dioxide. See so you have two oxygen atoms in CO2 as opposed to one in CO. If you look at the carbon to oxygen mass ratios, it's roughly 3 is to 4 which is 1 is to 1 roughly uh, if you make them whole numbers. If you do the same for CO2, it's going to be 3 is to 8 which boils down to 1 is to 2. So again you make two different compounds with the same elements and the carbon to oxygen ratios are two different whole number ratios. Let's see if you can answer a question with them. Which compounds shown here obey the law of multiple proportions? Obviously it has to be at least two things. What is your answer? Yes, it's B and C because they are made out of the same types of atoms, the blue one and the black one. Another example, what is the answer in this case? If you answered A and B, you are correct because the, both of them are made with the same three elements, the black element, um, the yellow element and the red element. Let's try a different question. If I give you chemical formulas, could you uh, identify which compounds obey the law of multiple proportions and maybe even say what uh, ratios do they combine, uh, atom ratios. So if you want to draw a figure, you can draw a figure. The answer is 1 and 4. What about the ratios? For here it's 1 is to 4 and here it's 2 is to 6 which boils down into 1 is to 3. If you want to find the ratios of the other atoms in these two, and here they are. Let's just quickly review the two models. Um, Democritus and Dalton both set the yellow highlighted sections. So they are common to both of them. Atoms are indivisible and the smallest particle of matter they are solid and can't be destroyed. Democritus said atoms are identical but Dalton said not so, only the atoms of the same element is identical but different elements have different chemical atoms of different chemical properties and masses and sizes. He also said atoms are rearranged to form new substances in chemical reactions and finally he said elements combine to form new compounds according to the law of multiple proportions that states when two um, or more compounds are formed from the same elements, the mass ratios between each element uh, in the compound is a different whole number ratio. Before I introduce you to the next model, we have to review some things about the subatomic particles we know of today and their charges. So electrons, protons and neutrons are subatomic particles that we know are exist in the atoms. So atoms are divisible, right? Electrons each have a minus one charge, protons each have a plus one and neutrons each has a zero charge. 
that is because neutrons are made with a proton plus an electron hugging each other causing a zero charge. What about their attractions? Opposite charges attract and like charges repel each other. So plus and plus or minus and minus will repel as and uh, plus and minus attract each other. Now let us look at the third model proposed by J.J. Thompson, a British physicist who was um, interested in understanding what cathode rays were. You may have heard of CRT or cathode ray tubes, old TVs, not the plasma ones, the ones before and computer monitors, they were very large, they had a big behind. That is because they were made out of long cathode ray tubes. And um, so William Crookes invented the cathode ray tube and J.J. Thompson was fascinated by these rays and wanted to find out where they were coming from. So in the cathode ray tube shown here, you have a cathode and an anode, the minus side and the positive side made out of two different metals. Um, the cathode ray tube may be filled with um, a vacuum or a gas um, and then it is connected to a battery or a power source in a com uh, electrical circuit. So when you uh, connect it to the battery what you find is um, there is a fluorescent coating here. Uh, if you watch the video I posted you will see a real cathode ray tube. Um, when the electric current passes you see this green beam going from the minus side to the positive side. So to J.J. Thompson this itself indicated that these rays were made up of something that was negatively charged because it is going from the minus side to the plus side opposites attract. So if it is going towards the plus side it must have a negative charge. He did two experiments. Um, so in one he placed a positively charged plate or a magnet and then he looked at what happened to the cathode ray. He found if he put a positive charge cathode rays bent towards it indicating an attraction. And then if you put a negatively charged plate he saw that the cathode ray bent away from it indicating repulsion. So um, here are the summary of his um, observations and what he concluded. Finally number 3 he tested different metals for the cathode and the anode to see if these rays were made by other cathodes and he, he found that every material he tested as a cathode uh, formed cathode rays. This indicated to him and he also tried different gases in the chamber. All of this indicated that cathode rays are made out of some kind of a sub atomic particle tinier than atom particle that is what subatomic means that is common to all matter. So now for the first time the atom is divisible into smaller particles. He also realized that the, cath um, the cathode ray particles cannot live inside the atom because without an opposite charge because they will repel each other as they are all negative. So he proposed this model that is called the plum pudding model. He said the atom is like the British desert called the plum pudding made out of batter and plums where the batter is the positive charged. You can think of a chocolate chip cookie and then the negative charged electrons he called the negative charged particles electrons they are scattered randomly within the atom and that um, this was the model of the atom. This is called the plum pudding model of the atom. So here is a review of the three atomic models and I will see you in the next video.